Hello there, everyone. Here we are at a new little mini section. This one is called, What is the Last Judgment? Most of us have a lot of distress around the last judgment because we've thought it's going to be having to look at the big long list of what's the matter with us and what's going to happen as a result. Happily, that's not at all what it's about. So it jumps right in and says, Christ's second coming gives the Son of God this gift. Now remember, Christ is not Jesus. That's all of creation. And here's the gift to hear the voice for God or that voice of assurance or love's voice proclaim that what is false is false and what is true has never changed. And of course, what's true that's never changed is how much we are loved and adored and safe. And this, the judgment is, in which perception ends. That's all the sensory business, the beliefs that we hold about ourselves. At first, you see a world that has accepted this is true. Remember, our world is projected outward, and now it's projected outward from a corrected mind. And with this holy sight, because now when it's corrected, all that I can see is what's right, what's true, what's loving, what's generous, what's beautiful. And with that kind of sight, perception gives a silent blessing and then disappears. Don't worry, you're going to be happy it disappears. This is not a threat because its goal is accomplished and its mission is done. The final judgment on the world contains no condemnation because it sees the world as totally forgiven with no sin and wholly purposeless. Nothing has been ruined. And so without a cause, and now without a function, in Christ's sight, in love's sight, it just merely slips away into nothingness. In nothingness it was born, just our imaginations, and in nothingness it ends as well. And all the figures in the dream in which the world began go with it. Bodies now are useless and will therefore fade away because the Son of God, that is all of us collectively and seemingly individually, is limitless. We are without boundaries. Bodies would impose boundaries. They can't be in this situation. So you who believe that God's last judgment would condemn the world to hell, along with you, accept this holy and very loving truth. God's judgment is the gift of the correction he bestowed on all your errors, freeing you from them and all the effects they ever seemed to have. To fear God's saving grace is just to fear, listen to this, complete release from suffering, return to peace, security, happiness, union with your own identity, Oh my goodness, who wants to be saved from that? That's what we're trying to find, not what we're trying to run against. God's final judgment is as merciful as every step in his appointed plan to bless his son. That's all of us. We're mercifully blessed. We're saved. We're looked after. Everything is being done on our behalf. And that calls us to return to the eternal peace we all share. So don't be afraid of love. Don't be afraid of joining. For it alone can heal all sorrow, wipe away all tears, and gently waken from his dream of pain this son that we all are, whom God acknowledges as his. So don't be afraid of this. Salvation asks that you give it welcome, and the world awaits your glad acceptance. And that's going to let it be free because we, all of us, and our world are one. So now this is God's final judgment. You are still my holy son, my holy precious creation, forever innocent, forever loving, forever loved, as limitless as your creator, completely changeless, forever pure. Therefore, awaken and return to me. I am your father who loves you dearly, and you are my son. You are my creation, 
and my only love. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the specifics of Lesson 311. Our title is, I Judge All Things as I Would Have Them Be. Judgment was made to be a weapon, to be used against the truth, to be used against oneness, because it separates what it is being used against and sets it off as if it were a thing apart. And then it makes of it what you would have it be. In other words, judgment up to this point has been a tool of separation. And now we want to use it for another purpose. Because when we do use it for our purpose, it judges what it cannot understand because it cannot see totality and therefore judges falsely. Of course it can't see totality because the purpose of judgment is not to see totality. So of course it can't. So let's not use it for this today. And instead, we're going to make a gift of it to him who has a different use for it. He will relieve us of the agony of all the judgments we have made against ourselves and others, which is also against ourselves, and reestablish our peace of mind by giving us God's judgment of his Son of us. Okay? So, Father, we do wait with an open mind today to hear your judgment of us, the Son you love. We don't know him, and we can't judge. And so we're going to let your love decide what he whom you created as your son must be. Our judgment just blinds us. All we know about are all those stories we've made up. Totally unhelpful and untrue. So keep this in mind today. Have a wonderful practice. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Goodbye.